This is Dave Sundstrom. Welcome to another video celebrating entertainment from decades gone by. You know, the good stuff. Dick Clark did indeed have a secret. And throughout his life, he exercised that secret in a way that allowed him to have tremendous success. Now, if any of you are thinking that this secret might have something to do with what seemed like his eternal youth, let me just state for the record that there was no picture of Dorian Gray tucked away in his closet. Instead, this secret was out in the open for everyone to see. And I think it's fair to say that anyone who implements this secret could possibly see positive changes in his or her own life. More on that in just a moment. But first, let me share a few memories that I have. Here's how I remember Dick best. His show, American Bandstand, ran for decades on ABC and during the early 80s it was the show that I watched most often on Saturday mornings. By that time I had graduated from the standard Saturday morning kid shows and Saturdays, especially before MTV debuted, were all about watching kids dance to the latest hits on American Bandstand. Each episode had a couple of guest performers stop by as well. Dick's interview style was casual and friendly. He seemed like the kind of guy that could get along with anyone. I also remember Dick well from his game show, The $20,000 Pyramid. Dick's easygoing and casual nature served him well as a game show host also. The other thing that I remember about this show was that the name kept changing. First it was $20,000, then the $25,000 Pyramid. And correct me if I'm wrong folks, but in the back of my head, I also remember a $100,000 Pyramid. Now, with all that said, the thing that I remember Dick best for was a program that only aired once a year and at the worst possible hour of the night, way after prime time. I think you all know that I'm talking about Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve. Prior to that show's debut in 72, Guy Lombardo was the king of New Year's Eve, but once Dick rolled into town, there was no question as to what was going to be on television during the final moments of the year. Without a doubt, it was Dick Clark for the win. Whatever it was, Dick truly seemed to have the magic touch. People liked him and they liked the shows that he headlined. And we'd all been watching him for decades. So at this point, I'm sure you're wondering, what is this secret that was teased up front but hasn't been mentioned since? Well, my friends, here it is. Dick Clark's secret was simply showing up and doing the work. Now I know, I know, that may seem too simple, but let me add this to the equation. With the exception of James Brown, it's possible that Dick may have been the hardest working man in show business. So if you were thinking that there might be some other secret, something top secret, really hard to figure out, I'm sorry, it's just that. This man was non-stop throughout most of his career. And why was he able to do that? Well, the answer is simple. It's because he was doing what he loved. And the same holds true for each one of us. We will be more successful in our careers and life in general if we fill our hours, whether it's in the workplace or at home, with activities that spark joy. So when news hit in late 2004 about Dick suffering a mild stroke, you know what? I thought nothing is going to keep this guy down. And I was certain that by the time New Year's Eve rolled around, Dick would be up to his usual shenanigans hosting New Year's Rockin' Eve. So imagine my surprise when I turned on the television and found this feller, Dick's good friend Regis Philbin, hosting the event. It was at that point that I realized that Dick's stroke had been anything but mild. Regis, to his credit, did his very best to give everyone hope that Dick would be back soon, calling his appearance that evening the best temp job ever. Over the next year or so, the public began to hear more about what Dick was going through. His journey to recovery was a long and arduous one. But the next New Year's Eve, Dick Clark was there. As Jocelyn Novick of the Associate Press reported, on that evening, his words had a familiar sound, not that of Dick Clark, unfortunately, but instead of a victim of stroke. The battle was on and Dick was fighting bravely, but it was still far from over. This is what Dick Clark told viewers that evening. Last year I had a stroke. It left me in bad shape. I had to teach myself how to walk and talk again. 
It's been a long, hard fight. My speech is not perfect, but I'm getting there. Among those watching that night was stroke survivor Leanne Hendricks, a former Miss Arizona who had a stroke when she was just 26. She told the Associated Press reporter that she thought that Dick's appearance that evening was courageous and inspirational to her. My guess is that she wasn't the only one who was inspired that night. Over the next few years, Dick continued to recover and to appear on New Year's Rock and Eve. But all that came to an end in 2012 when Dick Clark, America's eternal teenager, died of a heart attack at age 82. The era of Dick Clark, a man who found no peace in idle relaxation, but instead relished non-stop hard work, his own personal secret to success, had finally come to an end. Ryan Seacrest said this about his mentor Dick Clark when he first had his stroke. I'm not quite sure what that show will be like or feel like without Dick Clark. He certainly will be missed by America. What Ryan didn't know then was that Dick Clark may have been down, but he wasn't out. He would be back because he missed America just as much as they missed him. And I've got to say now that Dick is gone, I'm not as inclined to turn on New Year's Rock and Eve. Truthfully, it just isn't the same without him. Nothing against Mr. Seacrest. It's just that Dick was the heart and soul of that show, even during those final years when his appearances were limited. What a feller. Dick, Clark, you are truly missed. A huge thank you must go out to community member and channel supporter John Collins for requesting this video. I really enjoyed putting it together, John. Thanks again for the suggestion. And thanks to each one of you for hanging out with me for a few minutes to reminisce about the good stuff. You know, music, movies, and mostly TV from decades gone by. Now, if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. And what the heck, why not consider subscribing to the channel so that you don't miss future trips down memory lane.